All right, this is No Excuses with Michael D. Leonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. Michael, how you doing? Oh, very good. Got a little technical difficulties, but I got to commend you. You did it really quick. You fixed it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. We are about five minutes late. And for some reason, the timer is reading off. It might be because I bought a new computer. So it's my first time using it. I just opened it up last night. And it um, maybe the the time zone is, is off because for some reason it is reading at seven. So I don't know. But yeah. So guys, thanks for being here. We're going to have a interesting show so something a little different now so what we're going to do is we're going to play the foxwood casino footage and michael's going to narrate and answer and answer about what's happening who the people are um and and hey mike jr i dropped the link in the chat for you so feel free to, uh, to jump on it um, and join the show um so michael's going to answer tell us kind of what's going on who the people are why they're here xyz I don't even have the answers, so we're kind of leaning on Michael here. Um, he'll tell me to pause and stop and go as we're going along. I might pause and ask Michael a question. So it's a lot of people in here. Some of the characters, Michael, what, Frank Cowley, Jackie Knows. Who, oh, yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty good uh, video. So, yeah. uh, up and coming guys and guys that were uh, in power positions in this video. Okay. Now, can you give me a little backstory on this footage? Why are we even following you guys around? What is this? What was this footage used for? X, Y, Z. Yeah, Louis Braj, uh, Louis Braj, oh, Lil Riccio, who's a skipper, and he was handling the Connecticut stuff, uh, some stuff in the Bronx, some stuff in New Jersey. Very, very close to uh, Junior uh, and then myself. Uh, John Senior made him a captain. If you remember me telling the story about when uh, – there, his, his original captain, uh, Anthony Napolitano, Tony Baker uh, from Harlem, uh, passed away. There was their seat open, and Greg De Palma was going to give ten, was trying to give John 10000 to ingratiate himself with John. And uh, John says, you know who's going to get that seat? Not the guy who tried to give me 10000 So if you remember that story with Greg De Palma, uh, Louis Braj wound up getting the seat. He wound up being the captain there. And uh, it was a great choice. As we know, what Greg De Palma could do, uh, the guy was born in the, th if the guy was active in the 30s and 40s, he would be a legend. But uh, his, his propensity is to speak and bring agents around, et cetera, like that. Got a lot of people in a lot of trouble often. So, uh, but Greg was a tough guy. He was a man. And uh, his son is at this meet also. So uh, we got up there to meet him, meaning Louis Braj and some of his guys. His, I think it was his son-in-law, going to be his son-in-law. The, the guy's name was Taylor Britton, I believe. And huge gambler, huge. And got comp at the Foxwoods Casino. And there was a fight there with uh, Vinnie Pazienza and a tough Irish kid. Uh, junior love boxing. A lot of the people there love boxing. And uh, I got his tickets to go see the fight also. So between the meet, having the meet uh, with Louie and, and some of the guys around him, uh, we went up there and enjoyed uh, pleasure and business. Now, when did you, uh, did you at this time have any idea that, or did you, were you thinking, man, these guys are following us? I thought you might have told me something before that you just thought that your, that your antenna was up about, about all of this. Yeah, once we got into casino, uh, I, I just didn't have a good feeling. And I was telling Junior uh, and Jackie that uh, I felt that we were being watched a little more carefully than just a normal, uh, you know, we're a bunch of guys. That's number one. People are going to watch you. But it was looked like they made us. And I just had this feeling that, because Junior was pretty obvious, uh, if you know a little bit about the mob, this picture was in the paper all, often. So... Uh, and then you figure, uh, oh, how many people are going to keep a secret knowing we're going to the Foxwoods Casino? So you got to have like a, almost a, you don't have to have an in, internal instinct to know we may be followed. But for this reason, I, had, I felt really strong. And I think there's a point in the video, if we could catch it, where I point up at one of the cameras that okay. say, I feel like these fucking cameras are watching us. Yeah. And behold, it, it comes out later on why. And hopefully the Patreon members could pick out who the uh, undercover was there. I'm not even sure if I know the answer to that. No, you don't. 
I don't think I do. I mean, I thought this started, this part started uh, a little earlier. I thought they got us on the way in. Maybe this video was clipped. I, I seen a longer video at one time when we're walking in the casino. We got there in a limousine, uh, Jackie, uh, uh, myself, Junior. Uh, anyway, in this part of the video, now you could see why position John Junior with his back to the wall. Uh, the animated guy is uh, my ex brother in law, Frankie Fapiano, who I had involved with Local 23 in the construction. And that's me with my back turned. Like I said, my instinct was we were being monitored in some way, somehow. So we know where the cameras are. So I says, let's sit in the corner, let's pick a corner. And so they can't lip read, right? Uh, we'll put our backs there, and I got my back there blocking Junior's face, as you can see. And Frankie, uh, every now and then, I'm looking at people walking by. Uh, I'm trying to make him focus on talking directly straight where they can't read his lips. So uh, more covert as, as you could be in a casino. Uh, so we're talking about a beef with uh, Local 23, Louis Jardina's union with his son, Joey, um, and again, giving us access to the union which the Jardinas were giving us a little issue at this time. Um, Joe Brewster, Joe Delmonico was a delegate there, and they wouldn't even let him in the office at the time. So uh, Johnny G, Johnny Gamarano, who's also handling Local 23, got really angry because he was uh, handling Joe Brewster at the time through me. But even before I even got involved, through Gravano, and before that, even Paul Paul Castellano. So this is long, long, long history with this local. Louis Giardina's father, who was a wise guy, had part of this union. You know, it started the union. So with, I had Frankie trying to explain to Junior the problems we were getting into with them. Because uh, Gamarano and Fapiano really didn't like each other. But in this, this is the first time I think they ever got along with anything is... Uh, them beefing about the Jardinas. At one point, they said they both wanted to kill him. Joey Jardina, Louis Jardina's son, because he was being obstinate. And I told him, that ain't going to happen. So after this meeting here, we have a meeting with Mario Traina, who was uh, Louis Jardina and Teddy Jardina's skipper. So this was uh, my permission to go talk to, to uh, Mario Traina about his guys and giving us access. Now, as we're talking, you can see, if you could back it up a minute, because I ran over uh, who was there. Again, God against the wall. Who comes over? That's Lou Bra Louis Braj. Go, go back a little bit. Against the wall. Little balding with glasses. That's Louis. Uh, there's Jackie D'Amico to the right. Uh, all the way behind Frankie Fapiano. So this guy here, who's this? Where? Where's the where? uh, to the far the guy to the far far left? That's Lou Brosh, Lou Riccio. Okay, and then uh, the bright color shirt is that's me. That's you. Okay, and then that's Junior next to you. Right, to talking left. to. Right. Okay, um, and that's Frankie Cali. I think we see right. No, I don't, I don't think that's Frankie. I think that's uh, maybe Greg De Palma, Greg De Palma's son. And okay. on the, on this side is uh, Jack DeBico. Uh, against the wall, like looks like he's got the Chiefs jacket on. Is Charlie Fish? He's a, a wise guy with the Columbos, who's involved with their uh, concrete local, and uh, spoke to him several times about jobs in New York. Um, really, really close to John Jr. Very good friends to John Jr. with John Jr. I like Charlie very much. He was a really good guy, gentleman. Okay. And who else I can see in this video? Let's see here. <clears throat> Isn't that Frankie Cali right there? To yes, the right? Yeah. that is. I thought Frankie Cali was the guy with his back to us. Yeah, it is. Back. It is Frank. That's what I thought. Okay, Frank Cali. Okay. Um, if I can just interject and ask you a question, what was the reason that Fra Fabiano and and hope I didn't miss your question, but why didn't Johnny G and Frankie Fabiano not not like each other? They they bumped heads. They were two people that uh, very stubborn. And uh, Johnny G didn't like the fact that uh, if the Gravano flipped that uh, we wind up with the construction, he would never say it openly. But, uh, you know, it was a different faction altogether in his mind.
taking over the construction business. Pointed by Junior, actually pointed by Senior with me. And then I bring uh, my ex-brother-in-law, Frank, involved with us directly. Frank already had a good a job with Local 20, uh, 23 years ago and then Local 282 um, at this point in time. Well, well, he's got thrown out at this point, but he had a, lo a job with Local 282 like myself. We both got thrown out. Okay. Now, approximately what, because I don't think the year up here is right. So what? approximately what year are we in here? If you look down, way down, you'll see. 94, I see it. Yeah, it looks like... You know what? You want to see how freaky this is? You know what today is? Yeah, that's I was getting I was muted. I, wow. That's about that's really uh wow. <laughs> Saj, did you plan that? <laughs> no, we didn't even, wow. That's, that's uh I'm gonna mute wow. my <laughs> right. That's freaky. Who sent us that message from up there? <laughs> well down there. <laughs> That's interesting. That's really, uh, anybody that can't see it, the date at the bottom center of the screen is April 6, 1994. So it's funny that we're on April 6 today. That's very, and this was not planned. I didn't even know what the, what date this was this was done. So that's that's really really interesting. When are we going to okay. tell everybody about the other coincidence in Alaska? We're going to do that eventually. Yeah. All right. Continue. Now. Um, so we got it. Okay, you explain everyone that's there. Frankie Cali, we know he became a popular guy. A lot of people talked about this guy. It was suspected that he became, you know, you weren't there, but I know there's a lot of suspicions out there on what on what it, he was. Was he in the administration, X, Y, Z? At this point, can you give me a little bit of backstory on Frank Cali? What, what did he mean to the family at this point? Was he made? Was he not made? Was he, who was he with? Uh, how did he get involved? I got you. Yeah, originally he was with John Gambino. He was a young man at the time, along with uh, all the Gambino children, male. Um, Jackie and I wound up with uh, 18th Avenue and that whole faction when the Gambino brothers were in jail. And um, Frankie, like all well, the rest of them, were just floundering out there, uh, had no direction. And when Jack and I took over, we uh, brought them in, felt them out, see who had capabilities, uh, Etc. cetera. Uh, Jackie and I took a huge liking to Frank Kelly. He was a gentleman. He knew how to act. We see the potential for him. To stop that film. Stop it if you can. Stop it. Yeah. So I could point out some guys as we were talking. Okay. Um, yeah. And Frankie became a favorite of Jack and myself, uh, along with uh, Peter Inzarello and the other kids, uh, Joe Gambino, Tommy Gambino's son. Uh, they were they were good guys. But Frankie Frankie was the no blood there for Frankie with the Gambinos, but uh, was uh, engaged to um, Peter and Zavillo's sister uh, at this time. And uh, Frankie had the uh, we seen the upper mobility, like I was told. Uh, he had he had a Frankie, and uh, we seen that in him. And Jack and him got really close at this point. So he was brought up because we knew we we're going to straighten him out. At this time, Junior liked them also. So you can see in the crowd here, it looks a little blurry with when it stopped. I can move uh, it. But uh, it looks like it, there's uh, Craig De Palma near the wall. That's why I got confused with the jogging suit. That's Craig De Palma walking in, Craig De Palma's son. There's a guy named with the white hat, Joe Fasaro. He's an uh, associate of Louis Braj. Uh, Let's see. So the guy in the white hat is who again? His Are name is Joe Fusaro, uh, an associate of uh, Lou Brage. Okay. And you can see we had a pretty good contingent of guys. The guy, the ball guy walking around, I think that was Louis' son-in-law, future son-in-law. He's the guy with the gambling. Who got us the, the rooms and the, the comp there. Um, okay. Seems like I'm wearing that smile again. <laughs> now, at this point, this is like, you're almost pre, you're in your height of power. You're, this is when you're helping John run the family. This is when you're very influential in the family, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, why so many, like, I guess, why do you need, why is all these people there? Like, if, 
I guess I would wonder, like, when you're talking about all these sensitive topics, why would there be so many? <laughs> it's like you almost well, assume there's going to be, yeah. like, yeah. Well, I got, I got where you go. Yeah. Uh, it's a great question. I've been asked this uh, off camera several times, uh, even recently when we put the, the the video up. So somebody said, Michael, why would you just do that? Well, there's a lawyer, Jojo Carrazzo. Okay, who was uh, Jojo Carrazzo, Nikki Carrazzo's son and, and nephew, of course. And um, Junior figured being with, we had a lawyer with us, that it would show uh, legitimacy, that we were doing nothing wrong with a lawyer. And having that many people go into a fight and during a dinner, he thought maybe we so obvious that they, there's nothing that can be going on. So uh, that was the thinking, uh, which... You know, if you're a federal prosecutor, you can work this any way you want. You know, uh, it looks it makes it looks pretty sinister with all these guys. Especially look look at the three of us in the corner talking. You know, we ain't talking about the cocktail waitresses, right? <laughs> well, what kind of shrimp cocktail they got on the menu tonight? You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, you know, so it continues there with the. Uh, uh, like I said, Jojo Carrasco, you don't see him here, the lawyer, but he stays very, very close with uh, Junior throughout the, the rest of the night on film. Um, this here is a pretty good comment. I'm just looking at this pick. Nine dudes all clumped up. That's not a crime, but wouldn't that be a tell that uh, wouldn't that be a tell that something's going on? LOL. You guys uh, did you guys get off of a frat party bus? <laughs> it would seem so, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it was it, look when you seen everybody together. I would look around like right here. Look at these people struggling to get through with the luggage cart or uh, <laughs> beverage cart or wherever it is. Yeah. Well, I, I I think they noticed this in the casino. Okay. <laughs> well, again, my point being is they the casino was tipped off that we were coming. There was a cooperator, an informer among us at this time. I'm waiting for somebody to try to pick them up. Now somebody took a guess, and I'm trying to find the comment. Um, first, first guess, you get it right. I'll confess. Let's see. It was, um, I think it was Luke. Uh, I think it was Luke's comment. Luke O. Um, I gotta find it. The mob archaeologist is here. Hello, gentlemen. Um, well, I'll try to find the comment. I did. I got him. I see. His, I see his answer. Yeah, hold on. I, I, four o'clock, four twenty-five p.m. Twenty-five. Okay, let me see. Twenty-five, twenty-five. Well, I'll um, give it to you. Like, before I you're looking for it, you can well, the guy point out the hat. He was saying that hat looks very, uh, very suspicious. I just can't find the comment, but he did say it was a very oh, suspicious. It, it, was it Luke saying that or somebody else? I think it was Luke. I just can't find the comment. So. <laughs> well, Luke is right. Oh, Luke, we owe you a cigar. He gave okay. the guys very good. Luke knows the street. He smelt them. He smelt them through the video. Wow, good job, Luke. You want to pop on? <laughs> very good. Um, yeah. Then later on, uh, after this, there was a, a a pinch, a drug pinch, and Jackie knows through some lawyers got a hold of some three hundred twos. And it had to do with a guy named Nicky Lasorso, who was a wise guy, also at Louis Brash. And uh, Louis, uh, Nicky was in the heroin business. And as we're reading the 302s, there were some redacted names. And as I'm, I'm Jackie and I reading this thing, Jackie's looking at me. I says, because it was in the guy's crew, in Louis's crew. I say, this got to be that guy, Joe, because at one point, it looks like there's only three letters without the last name. You know, redacted, redacted, redacted. Said, could it be this guy Joe? And it wind up being him. He was the informant. Very good, Luke. Good job, Luke. <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing here. You can narrate as you like. Now everybody's getting hungry right now, Jack. I can tell you that. That's the truth. Everybody said, when are we gonna go eat? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not no kidding. We all have ravenous appetites, especially Junior. Junior has he ate all the time. Good thing he worked out the way he did. And, you know, the, the thing was, uh, you're, you're standing around and you want to see uh, if anybody's trying to get next to you, especially when they were playing craps. We all, we all figured that they would put somebody in, 
at the crap table, the, you know, an FBI agent or something to try to, with a wire, try to hear what we were saying. How, it was long, the video. how long in advance did the, the FBI had to plan this? Because they obviously had to come to the casino and set something up to control all these cameras. So it had to be. You know, well, yeah, yeah, no, they go in the control room and it's easy. That's all they do is go in the control room, tell the whoever's running the casino, uh, you know, to focus on us. Yeah. Now, Michael, at this point, we know Junior is, I guess, unofficial acting boss, but he's the guy. Right. And it, there was a panel. So what at this in 94, who was who were the people who were running the family here with that panel? It was Junior. We know was the and then it was a panel beneath him. Yeah. Well, Junior was here. Uh, Junior. Junior. Jackie. Jackie knows is here at this time. OK. Nikki Carrazzo is on until he gets pinched. OK. And 95, I think he gets pitched around now, or maybe a little bit before. Um, Sonny Cusacone was on for a little while. Okay. All right. Pete, of course, Pete Gotti. Yeah, so we continue on with that, with our conversation about the construction. Um, this was still uh, Uncle Frankie and John talking this whole time? Yeah, the three of us. Yeah. This was like a 40 minute conversation or more. Yeah, well, it was very deep. It was a very serious conversation because uh, they were, Johnny G and Frankie, like I said, the only thing they ever united on was trying to get hurt Joey Giardina. And of course, I wasn't going to have a You ain't going to kill a wise guy's son like that for not letting you in the office. We can fix it. We go to the guy skipper. That's what you do. Go to the guy skipper, you get permission, you go to the guy skipper, and you you tell him what's what's going on with this guy, and you gotta straighten him out. Um, Pete uh the Greek says, Hey Michael, when wise guys go out to eat, is there a protocol when it comes to who pays? Well, I gotta tell you, Junior picked up every check. I don't remember him not picking up a check. And we were out to eat a lot. I mean, I was with him at times seven days a week, days and nights. And whenever we went out to eat, I don't remember anybody ever picking up a check. Is that because of his position that he was he support? Is that customary? The boss should pick up the check. You know what? No, not really. I, I was just junior. He was a, he, in that manner. He was a huge sport. And he wanted everybody around. We I, I mean, this wasn't two guys going to dinner, four guys going to dinner. When we met guys like Patsy Conti, we beat him down in Williamsburg or Greenpoint somewhere. Uh, you know, there'd be ten guys at least. And uh, he, he pick up check the fifteen hundred two thousand dollar checks, he had no problem with it. As long as he got shrimp and he was close to a bathroom, he was good. He had to go to the bathroom as soon as he finished eating. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um. All right. So we're kind of still staying in the same place. I, I'm gonna move. Yeah, you can it. Fast forward it. And right, now we break up. And this is now, what he is. Yes, right. Frank, Frankie's up with the K now. He was in a very bad car accident. Uh, that's little little Mario. He's a wise guy. He's with Louis Braj. They're related um, to the right of Fasaro. Luke, where were you when I needed you to tell me this guy was bad? <laughs> you got to be hanging out with us. Nick says, that's crazy. Just everyday folks just doing their thing and you guys talking about not whacking anyone. <laughs> yes, Jackie I, knows. Jackie knows was a crap that's, shooter. That's John, me, uh, Frankie. Frankie gave you a handshake and a kiss, right? Yeah, you go back it up so you get a little clarity. Okay, back it up a little bit. Uh, more. That's my right there. That was now talking to me with the guy with the cane. That's my ex brother in law, Frankie Fapiano. Uh, that's again, little Mario there, where Frankie's talking to. Uh, let's see, that's Charlie Fish with the chief chief jacket, friend with the Columbos. And let's see, and comes, no, that's Frank Kelly right next to you, right? Yeah, standing next to me. Yep, that's Frankie Kelly, guys. Okay. And uh, let's see, Jojo Carrazzo, this is what I want to see here. That's Jojo Carrazzo, the lawyer, the shorter guy with the glasses, right in front of Frankie. And if you can move it, maybe we'll get a, a better look at him. 
Joe was great. Junior liked like Jojo very, very much. And that was Frank Kelly just kissed you, I saw. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um yeah, there's little Jojo. Like I said, Junior and him were extremely close. Uh, John really liked him. It wasn't uh something that was just he was using him as a lawyer. Uh, he really liked him. This is funny, but this is very true. You can always pick out Junior by his mannerisms. I thought it said that, that's so true. You don't even gotta see his face, just the way he's he has that very stoic, that tough yeah, he, yeah. he wears that tough guy persona on him a lot. <laughs> Got a lot of muscles there too. He had extra muscles. Oh, Could you give me a couple extra muscles? <laughs> Work off. He was in big shape. Yeah. All right. Let's move along a little bit here. Looks like you had a little bit of a belly there. Yeah, I like to eat. Now, there's Louis Braj Jr. A uh, little Mario right there behind Louis, Louis Braj. Again, he was a made guy with Louis, related. There's another guy balding there, a little heavier, Angelo. He's also uh, with uh, Louis Braj. Really Michael Caruso says, didn't Frankie get into a head-on accident on the Belt Parkway in 94? Yes, he did. He did very bad. He almost died. He was ejected from the car. Uh, very, very bad. He, uh, and it, it led to a lot of problems in his life. Uh, the two other people yeah. died, right? That, that were being chased? Yeah, was, they went on the ball, ball parkway the wrong way. The cops were chasing them the wrong way in the highway. And they hit Frank. And he was ejected from the car. I mean, it was bad shape. Michael, how was your relationship with Frankie during the life and after you left the life? Which Frankie? Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm always wondering which one they mean. I'm guessing... Uh, Fabiano, because yes, he, I, I'm thinking Fabiano because he says after you left the life. After I left the life. No, because he says, "What was your relationship before you, while you were in the life, and then after you left the life?" Well, let's see. Let's let's confirm who he's in. I can answer both ways, but it don't matter. But let's see who he really means before we speculate. Now, Jackie knows he's in heaven right now near that crap table. He loved to shoot crap. Okay. To, to his downfall, he loved to shoot, shoot crap. Frankie Fabiano is who he's asking about. All right, so you want to stop the film while I talk so we don't... Uh... Yeah. There's there Joe Facero. Yep. <laughs> Got his nose right there. Uh, yeah, Frankie, um, Frankie and I went through different phases. Of, I know Frankie since he's a kid, and he used to deal cards... Uh, along with his cousin Scott, uh, Joe Butter, and other people used to deal cards in my social club when I had it on Utrecht Avenue. Uh, Frankie was a real gentleman and um, worked for Local 23. Like I said in an earlier video, uh, Frankie DeChico had told me to handle him along with the other Frankies. And um, after Frankie uh, gets killed, he gets into 282. He winds up around Big Louie Valerio who Frankie Fabiano's father and Louis are the dearest of friends, very extremely close. And uh, Robert never gets straightened out. Frankie's father never gets straightened out. But uh, Frankie does through Sammy. And um, Frankie changed a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to talk bad. That's not a bad talk. He started really feeling himself as a wise guy. Uh, he was a good wise guy made mistakes. And uh, I don't know if I want to go down this rabbit hole, but uh, made some mistakes, critical mistakes, um, which led to a lot of bad stuff happening. But uh, he was a good wise guy. He would, he would fight. He would fight. He, I, I got funny stories about him and Wild Bill together uh, going at each other, which was, wasn't funny then, but uh, went toe to toe with Bill. And um, he fought for, fought for what he thought was right in our family and represented the uh, construction industry pretty good for us. Uh, met with a lot of people, put his balls up. Frankie was a murderer, no question. Um, had no problem shooting you. So I will talk about Frank another time. Let me collect my thoughts on that, how, where I want to yeah. go. With. Yeah. Uh, but Frankie was a good guy. And then, uh, you know, later on, there was problems with the, the boss from his sister and stuff like that. Well, Frankie was away. He was doing a bit. 
And then I flip, and then he flips after me. So, uh, who do you think got the blame for him flipping? Uh, so, like I said, that we'll get into that. But Frankie's Frankie's a good guy. I wish him all the best. He's my son's uncle. Uh, his his uh, you know his his kids are like my kids. Uh, so I wish him the best. Continuing in this video. Michael, what was Mario Trainer's response after the meet? Oh, that the meeting was, I think I did a little something on the meeting when we all met with Johnny G, uh, Joe Brewster, uh, Teddy Giardina, who's a wise guy in the in the woodwork. His company was worth over a hundred million dollars. F and G heating at a Long Island. Uh, huge player, but in the background, never brought out quietly. He's one of those guys who skated through that life. And never got arrested, never got stubbed his toe, never had to do anything, but made nothing but had a money machine with his business, construction business, which he passed along later on to his son. And I, I never bothered them. I never took a quarter from them uh, at that time. I just let him skate. But at this meeting, he was there. Louis Giardino was there. Johnny G, myself. I took Tommy Cherubino, my Gumbato with me. Uh, and uh, we worked it out. He and Mario was old school. I think that's me playing. A, they gave me a buck and a quarter or coins or whatever the hell they are. And uh, I was trying to get rid of them as fast as possible. I didn't want nothing to do with that machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put the bucket to Jackie, I think, later on. I kept winning. I didn't want to win. Just wanted to get away from there. Um, anyway, yeah, Mario seen it for what it was. He knew he knew Louis was wrong. He told him, you give them access. Joe Booster goes in the into that office. You can't shut him out. He let him know it was, it was a serious incident. Uh, Mario spoke. They listened. Um, matter of fact, they weren't happy at the, after that. They tried to go to, to be with Tommy Gambino, which was a huge mistake, Louie and Teddy. They weren't happy with that decision. They thought maybe Tommy could help them. Uh, Tommy wanted no part of them. But there wasn't the option to go anywhere, any, anywhere uh, anyplace else anyway. So... Yeah, that's Taylor with the uh, blue shirt, balding. That's Jackie right there, right in the middle. Yeah, here's Joe Fasero putting his nose there again. And he's talking to little Mario. And the cocktail waits just following him around. How much money do you think Jackie had in his pocket? He had the, he have enough to play a game? <laughs> oh, yeah, he played. He played and lost. I know you say, people always say he never had any money. And when he had it, he, he bet it. <laughs> Well, he had it, then he lost it. <laughs> no, but you know what? Jackie, Jackie, whatever he had five cents in his pocket, he gave it to him. There's no joke. Jackie just he was a great guy. Jackie should have like been a guy who hit the lottery for a hundred million because he would have made a lot of people happy, including the casino. But that's Junior's pose. Yep, right there. That that's is. his pose is a a pose. <laughs> Yep, he does that. He was doing that on 60 Minutes, that same. Yeah, that's his. Uh... Yeah. Hey, he picks up the dice. There you hey, go. Michael, how did guys act around Junior? Did he get the deference that, like, a guy in that position would get? Or did he have to, like, how would, would guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was the guy in authority, of course. Yes, yes, without a doubt. From me and everybody else. Absolutely. All right. So some of the rumors that go around about him that he was – maybe guys didn't think the best of him, but they didn't do it to his face. They oh, gave him – Yeah, no way did it to his face. Okay, yeah. He um, told his Uncle Pete one day they got into an argument. He told his Uncle Pete, I'll beat you like a $2 French hooker. His Uncle Pete? Oh, yeah. Junior didn't take no shit. I don't give a fuck who you are. Wow. Yeah, I remember that story you told me when you said he looked Joe Watts in the eyes and said, if I knew you were going to bring Georgie Lambadoza, I would have brought another body bag. But your ass. Told Joe Watts that. That's right. Yeah. Um, he was serious. He was serious. You know, this whole thing about him not liking the position, like not, not liking that role, or his father put him in the position he really didn't like. 
Tell me if he likes it or not right now. No knock on Julian. I know his mind changed later on. That's okay. But at this point in time, he loved it. And you could play around with him too also. So he was, he was playing. So, so uh, you would say at least at the time he was like anyone else and he loved the life. Like he Oh my Junior. god. Yeah. Okay. Hey, RJ, you ever see history of the world? It's good to be the king. <laughs> Now that guy with the glasses, he the guy with the glasses with the hair. I always thought he was a fed. Right there yeah. at the table. But if he isn't, that's got to be a disguise. And if it's not, he should work in the government. <laughs> he should be a spy. I wonder why they would zoom that tape in on him like that. Peter Greek says, was Junior acting boss at the time? If so, how did the associate who later became an informant get so close to Junior? All right, two-part question. Easy. John was never the acting boss. Was he Was he acting boss? Yes. But there was no title ever. It's a misnomer. He was on the panel. He was a captain on the panel. But was he decision-making capacity, uh, final say guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, uh, And the associate was around uh, Louis Braj. This was like any other associate, like I was an associate, right? Everybody's an associate before you become a made man. You're an associate. So uh, being in his proximity, you know, and there's, uh, like I said, Junior's relationship with Louis Braj, Junior really liked him. And Louis, I believe, was not one of those guys that Jun thought Junior was, wasn't for the position. Louis truly liked Junior. You've seen it. Many times we went to dinner together, and Louis really liked Junior. Um. Well, hey, Michael, what was your relationship like with Tommy Gambino? Um, no real relationship. I spoke with Tommy, you know, not, nothing with real business. When I worked with Tommy, well, you're not going to rust off. Me, Frankie Notch, and Frankie Maraconda, there was some kind of nonsense going on way back in the 70s in the garment district with strikes and all this other stuff. So they wanted us to go there. Giorgio Romini, before he was a wise guy, worked for Tommy. He was down there. Uh, and there was this thing with somebody trying to uh, interfere with the trucks and deliveries and stuff like that. Well, there was one guy that said something. He got hit right over here with an ax handle. And he gone, they almost killed him. He almost died. And uh, we lasted a day and a half with Tommy Gambino <laughs> and, on his job. But Tommy was a good guy, a uh, very quiet, well-spoken gentleman. Um Respected by everybody, every family. A lot of people don't know he went to college, graduated college. Like he was like a real, it just kind of shows how, the, you know, Costa Nostra had a, had, had, was one of the, I mean, I, I've never seen a criminal organization that everybody could play a role. <laughs> like, you know, the guy went to college, took a, a, a big business rackets, made a lot of money. He stayed out of all the, you know, I, I don't you know, know. Look, look, the Garmin said it was something that his father, with time of Lucchese, and when they mm -hmm. went back with the Jewish guys, that the Jews they had with them, uh, made that super successful. And Tommy, with his business acumen, college, and everything else, as personality, uh, didn't gangster the place. He did business. They loved Tommy. All those Jews, they loved Tommy. He didn't, he didn't bully them. You know, the work was the work, the truck and uh, everything they did. He was on the money. He was a good businessman. We were in a great business. This guy owned buildings in Manhattan. I mean, he's got another guy worth over 100 million. Yeah, he's still rich today. He does philanthropic projects. He does. <laughs> yeah. How did John feel about him? John like him? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we can move along a little bit here. Let's yeah, see. So you, not, now you guys are back in the same corner and it's just you talking to Junior and someone else. Creature of habit. That's Frankie Fapiano again. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can fast forward this. That's Charlie Fish. Michael, when, when you're watching this kind of stuff... You know, what I'm doing here with, with Frankie after Frankie just keeps going on and on and on, making his case against uh, the Jardinas, I'm trying to tell them, Junior, that, look, there's other ways we could fix it. If Frankie's right. They are doing this, but we need to fix it. I need to go see Mario. 
this is the gist of the conversation. I don't, of course, I'm not going to remember verbatim. At yeah. that, but this is trying to put this together where there will there will be no uh, violence or no damage or nothing like that that happens to this union. Because it is, it's an integral part of, of the families, Local 23, Labor's Union. You know, we had other unions there too that were with us. Uh, there was no joke. You're running a, you're running a business. So you got to handle as a business as best you can. Plus the guy's father and uncle are wise guys we're talking about. Did Junior usually, was he receptive to your advice and things you would say or he, like, so like right, so right now you're talking to him, you're giving him some advice. Typically is he go, okay, yeah, I see. Was he, did he listened to you pretty, pretty well or was he just kind of Well, just take a look at this video, right? Frankie's being really detailed, long-winded, very opinionated and his passion that he hates the Jardinas right now. But look how tentative Junior is to listen to him. He's taking it in. He's not cutting him off. He's letting him go. He's letting the soldier that's close to him, that's in his inner circle. Frankie's part of Junior's inner circle, for sure. So uh, when Frankie got the, in the accident and was tra being transferred, right, from one hospital to the next, Junior jumped in the ambulance with him. So he was close. You know, uh, Junior did the right thing. He uh, really close to us. So now here's me going there with Frankie because I know he gets a little passionate and uh, got to back him up a little bit at times. But uh, what he's saying is, is all right, just about. Yeah. About what's going on. But it was Frankie's position to lay it out, give Frankie the opportunity to lay it out to the, the boss of the family at the time. When you look at old stuff like this, does it give you any... Like, man, I wish I was there right now. <laughs> like, th th does it give you any, like, feeling where you just, you know, is it like a, you know, a great basketball legend, a great baseball player watching his own, hitting his, you know, his best game when he wishes he could still do it? Is it that kind of feeling for you or it's just an old video? Yeah, you know, it, it goes back to, you know, my feelings about cooperating, you know, what I did, the legacy. That Now, you look at this, you, you, know, you get, like, melancholy, you know, you, know, you get – you know, you, you feel, start feeling bad about yourself <laughs> again, you know, because this was a, a great moment in my life right here. <laughs> you know, maybe not, again, not the society. Let me put that disclaimer out there. Maybe not the society, but we were running a business. We were running an organization. Look at the way we're dressed. Anybody got a suit and tie on, a hat? Anybody, you know, playing a role? No, I got jogging suits on. John's got jogging suit on. A little different. Then the, what you remember what you talked about? We did a video about things change. Everybody's dressing like the Godfather. Everybody, no, it just debunks it totally. There's not one guy there with a suit and tie on. Is that including captains? You got three captains there, four captains there. Yeah. Right. So this is this is what it was. This is the way we act, act reacted to uh, the, uh, the the suit and tie uh, mentality. There was plenty of guys who did that. Absolutely. Now family and other families. Absolutely. You guys look great dressed up. And we did it. We did when we went out. We went clubbing and or important meetings. We dressed. But like this, we were casual. Well, that kind of one of the distinctions you could see between the old timers and the young and the young Turks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Again, going back to what was said when after the Godfather, the younger guys were all dressed up. No, it's, it's, it's the opposite. Everybody with the jogging suits. Feel is Adidas, Puma, you know, everybody went into that. That became Vogue. Yeah. We didn't all dress suit and tie all day long. But the older guys didn't. They look great. They yeah. had their brims up. Hmm. Um, let's take a Nick says, Michael, I hope this helps you heal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Uh, you know, it's it's great times with people that I loved at the time, you know. So, uh, you know, I'll bring back uh, those memories. Michael, do you still have that shirt? <laughs> he, I left with you. No. no <laughs> I have a lot of stuff from that those years, though, even before. Yeah. Was there any talks on making Frank Fapiano a skipper? Yes. When Mario Traina dies. Yes. Very good. Where'd you get that from? You must have read something. <laughs> good for Santiago, you're good. I give you credit. Yeah, there was, and then there was things that were happening with Frank. 
I told Frank um, that it may happen when Mario died. And then we had to pull it back. And um, so like I said, some things happened and we couldn't reward him with that at that time. Uh, and we put uh, Joe Marino, Joe Oxy. I sat down with because Junior said, who are we going to put there? And I said, there's a guy that's friendly with Joe Corey, old timer. Um, I said, let me go talk to him. And I had a couple of meetings with him and uh, told me that he was a World War II vet. He was a prisoner of war at the Battle of the Bulge. I know Junior would love that. And uh, I went back to John. He says, I think this is our guy. He was a prisoner of war, Battle of the Bulge. Bulge, close to Joe. Serious guy. Uh, knows the life. And uh, Junior made him a skipper. Um, did Junior ever go around in a basic suit? I've never seen him dressed up. Not saying he needs to live up to John style, but very modern for the times. Yeah, you know, no. At times I'd be out in Queens and he said, We're going out, we're going out to the all right, I gotta go home. No, no, I can't take you up the block. I'll buy your suit. Yeah, they had a guy down there that had suits and uh never made it home probably to the next day, 11, 12 o'clock. Um, but made made up suits. Yeah, he wore suits, absolutely. Uh weddings, wakes, etc. Sammy the Bull referred to Tommy Gambino as a dressmaker. Mm -hmm. Also told a story about Gotti Sr. insulting Tommy Gambino in front of others. Sammy says again, you know, like Simon says, take one step back, two step forwards, one to the side. You're getting, see, you had to stop me out with Sammy again. <laughs> uh, if Sammy wants to say, John, call him a dressmaker, well, it, you know, I never heard it. Um, does everybody have to kill 19 people or, or more for Sammy to respect them? Uh, for me, I would want to be with the dressmaker than Gravano. Hindsight. Either you wind up dead with Gravano in jail or he rats on you, right? And Tommy Gambino, you don't, the worst that can happen to you, become a millionaire and live your life out nice. Yeah, I gave you a – when we did our show, when we talked about the uh, – I asked you about – I picked three real tough guys and three good earners and nice, sensible guys. I think one was Tommy Gambino, one was Jackie, and you said, I'd rather be with them because I can sleep at night. <laughs> and wake up. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, before I forget, tell me your story. Let me tell you a story about a letter I got. Remind me at the end, all right, because I may forget. Okay. Uh oh. What's wrong? All the casino people are going to get like the urge to run the casino with all those slot machines there right now. Yeah, you can skip through this. This is just okay. walking. trying to catch us walking from place to place. Looks like we're looking at a menu. You guys are again talking. Who's out there again? Is that Joseph Carrazzo, the lawyer? Joseph Carrazzo. That's Joe Carrazzo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michael, did you know Bobby Glasses? His stare gives me the chills. Yeah, Bobby Vinacci. Yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. Good guy. He wasn't made until after John went away, though. For some reason, uh, I don't know what it was. I, I don't want to say. Even the guys passed on. I don't want to say the story because I don't know if it's true or what happened there with uh, why John Senior would not straighten him out. So where are you guys going now? Guys now, the casino, you go through this like like almost like a mall. There's there's shops on each side, little boutique shops, et cetera, little food shops, boutique shops, uh, really, really nice. And uh, I started with some shopping bags and filled them up. I'm not in this picture, but later on when they're gambling, I go around do a little shopping. Nelson says, I know the Philly, I don't know the Philly history as well, but why not go to a more friendly Atlantic City casino? I mean, you go where you want. Can't blame that at all. Yeah, no, we did Atlantic City several times, but this was Louis Braj from Connecticut and the Bronx. 
it was his invite and Foxwoods is up there. So uh, that's why he picked the spot. And uh, we, like I said, there was a fight. Junior like fights. So it was, they covered a lot of bases. And you can see the extent of amount of uh, tension we got here. Wherever we walked, there was a camera. Even when we went to stores, uh, I, again, it's, I don't think it's in this one. I have the original for my case in Atlanta. Uh, the original, really the original, was produced for the scores case when John Jr. got pinched. And then when I was pinched a year or so later, they produced the, the full-length version in my, uh, in my Atlanta case. It's not as grainy. It's real clear. The government's version. Did Jojo Carrazzo act like a uh, lawyer or act like a wise guy? No, nah, he was a gentleman. You know, he was a gentleman. He knew, he, you know, his proximity to Junior, plus his uncle was Nicky and his father was Jojo. You know, uh, Nicky was on the on the committee for a while. Then I think right after this, uh, Nicky might get pinched. No, he wasn't one of those guys like, you know, that godfather lawyer that was like, I only take one client. <laughs> I just oh. worked yeah, many, many clients. <laughs> Don't go with the house counsel for us. He was on the yeah. payroll. Um, was that common? Did guys, did families have like a, or just because that? Yeah. yeah, there was guys very close. Absolutely. I mean, like a lawyer. Then a lawyer with. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Um. You need guys. You can. You need lawyers. You can trust. Sometimes there's messages that could be passed. When you're sitting without bail, what were your thoughts when something? Maybe they're not verbal messages. Maybe they're they're like like pigeon carriers. You know, carrier pigeons. I should say, you put something in an envelope and make somebody read. I did that. I didn't put the lawyers on the spot. I put it in an envelope, and I told them when you get to that person, just uh, tell them you could burn it or rip it up in a million pieces when you finish when the guys finish reading it. I'm not sure if you ever heard that audio when John's bitching about all these fucking, excuse my language, these fees he's getting hit with, and he says, yeah, the Gambino crime family, what? It ain't, there ain't no Gambino crime family. It's the Shargal Cutler and what do you call it, crime family? <laughs> um, did, did you ever meet Cut, uh, meet Cutler? Oh, yeah. You got to yeah, be kidding me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Was I, it, got, I know he got him too when I did to him one day. Okay. I went complaining to John. How about him? Like, did he? Because I know he got taken off of the case because they said he was house counsel. Yeah, but did he act like a like a lawyer or did he act like a, a wise guy? Because he seemed like he was a tough guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's, in his in his briefcase, he used to carry. There was cologne, a new shirt, and a tie. He had no papers in there. <laughs> Would you guys have dinner that night? Oh, we're gonna, it's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, they put me at the head of the table, I think, to give me the check. But it was comped. I'm pretty sure it was comped, the check, by the casino. So where is this now? Is this where you guys ate at? Uh, yeah, it looks like that. No. Yeah. That looks like this crap table there. Uh, blackjack table, excuse me. This is black table. Like I can't make it out too well, I'll tell you the truth. Hey Michael, I watched the Jeffrey Lickman interview. He said that you flipped that you flicked him off when you were on the stand. No, actually I didn't. He made a he, he made a uh, complaint to the judge that I but I made a gun gesture like I was gonna shoot him. But I really went like this then. I wig I gave him the wig when I got off. I was talking about the uh, family stuff, you know. Wives and children. So I'm all like this. I gave him a. He says, Your Honor, he pointed a gun at me. You made his finger like a gun. She went, Oh, come on. She was a. It was Judge Judy's sister, Shira Shinlin, the federal judge. She went, Oh, come on. <laughs> she didn't like me either, by the way. Yeah. This is funny. All the outfits are back in style now, anyway. That's true, yeah. too. <laughs> it's true, Ross. Ross, say hello to your wife. Um, looks like they're trying to find us. There they are. Now, what's what you guys? What's this here now? I don't know. Let's see. Well, here. They were just outside getting some fresh air. 
Well, maybe, um, guy, or maybe some of the other guys that left. The guy, the guy in the disguise was a West Side guy sent by Bobby Manor, LOL. <laughs> yeah. Boy, did they screw up on tape, too. Talk about getting caught on tape. My God, they get, cost them their lives. Doing life in jail. And Bobby, I think, is still alive. Bobby's, Bobby Manor's family goes way back. Dangerous guys. Did Frank Kelly speak English with a detectable Italian accent? No, not at all. Zero. Now, since we're on Kelly, uh, you know, there's this um, interesting comment here. John Panisi. Yeah, that's, that's for Sarah right there again. Uh, wringing his hands. Now, why are they taking these guys' pictures that had nothing to do with us? Brad says, John Panisi said point blank when he was in the Lucchese family, he was told Frank Kelly was the boss of the Gambino family. I can't verify that. I haven't heard him say it, but I don't, I don't believe that you're lying, Brad. I'm just, uh, but Michael, you knew him so well. And I know like when I talked to you about him, when I read just a statement, I think you gave to uh, Capisci, you just said, I don't even know this guy ever had a fist fight. He was just like a very, just a gentleman, just a, Respected guy, respectable guy, just wasn't. Um, and I asked you before, and I think you don't mind me saying this, but you told me like sometimes families just put guys up front every now and then, but maybe there's somebody back there somewhere else. And I asked you last week about Jackie Knows. You think he was ever the boss? Um, and this is an unofficial answer. Answer you're going to give because he wasn't there. But could you see Jackie? I mean, Frank Kelly as being someone who would have been the boss of the, like the actual boss or in the administration. Or well, look. Going back to the, the fist fight contest uh, comment, uh, my point was they were making Frankie out to be this drug dealer, along with all the other Gambinos. They were making him out to be uh, a killer, a violent guy. And, and my comment was, Frankie's not that way. Frankie's not in the drug business. I was with the guy. A lot. He was with me a lot. He was with Jackie a lot. Uh, the guy was a, had a, an acumen for business. Whether it would be lucky, it's hard to say he's lucky when he was murdered like that. But he was very uh, lucky. And when every time he touched something in business, it succeeded because he was a good guy. He had, and he knew how to move, meet, uh, put people together and not be greedy. Frankie had a tremendous quality about sharing business. Uh, and putting people together. He was really good at that, uh, putting people in place and made a lot of friends. So when I made that comment, it wasn't to take anything away from Frank. No, I didn't take it that way. No, I'm just saying if anybody ever thought that or how yeah. well, you know, because you take a snippet, you talk to somebody, right? And they take a little snippet and they make it sound like, oh, that guy, Michael said that guy's a killer. I, well, I didn't say it that way, maybe. Maybe it's a long-winded thing like I'm doing now, trying to be explanatory. And I guess... I, that could be something that be good on my part or somebody say, well, Michael, you want to shut up already? But I try to give as much detail as I can without having a snippet taken out. Yeah. So Frankie, uh, I, I, you know, in a period of time where we, when I was in the street, no, he would have been a good captain. I pushed him. I made him an acting captain. I went to Pete. Johnny Rizzo was Pete, Jackie knows his acting captain. I should have got the wrong guy there. So what do you mean? Just take him down. Johnny Rizzo's not. Forget about Johnny Rizzo. You got to put Frankie there. So, uh, and at one point I went to go meet Jojo Carrazzo on a meeting. I went to go meet him out in a, a German restaurant. Pretty good out in Queens. And, um, you know, Frankie walks in. Frankie brought me to the meeting. And we're sitting at the bar. There was this Louie. Around Jojo, Jojo, me and Frank. And uh, I said, see this guy over here? This is a, not a diamond in the rough. This is a diamond out of the rough. Talking about Frankie. By the way, he's ready. That was my point. He's ready to be a skipper. He's ready for that position. Boss at that time, no. Because there were all the different players there. There were other players there that could be boss. You understand? So everything is like a time stamp. You know, as time goes on, who's the players that are around? Who's the players that are not around anymore? Who's the void you got to fill? Where's the vacuum? 
After Gravano flipped, there was a huge vacuum. Me and Junior come on the scene with some others, right? The Carrazos. After I, 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 you know, I flip, there's other people that come on the scene. There's a vacuum. People come up because there's other people that are missing. So is Frankie one of those guys later on? I'm not going to answer it because I don't know. Yeah. Would he have been, by my opinion, what kind of guy he was? Yeah, he would have been a great leader of men. 100%. But I can't answer that. You know, if he was. So when people say uh, John Panisi says the boss, I believe John Panisi said he was the boss. I'm not going to contradict John. I was in the street. He flipped way after me. So I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not here to investigate whether Frank Kelly was yeah. a boss or not. But uh, I have my opinion, but I'm going to keep that to myself. Why do you he think some of the people? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, good. I have my opinion on what he what he was, who was up front, who wasn't up front, who was really running the family. I have an opinion on it, but it's, I don't feel it's my place to give it at this time. Yeah. Why do you think some of the people had an issue with? Because I, I heard some of the wiretaps when, you know, why do you think some of the people in the family were upset with him coming up so fast? Was it was it just an age thing? Or was it that he well, was? Let me, cut fast? let me cut you off. First of all. Who's the people? I don't want you to answer me. Who's the people saying that? An imbecile? Person who just got on the street? Just came around? Person that's maybe wants to be power hungry? A person that thinks he's smarter than everybody else? You got to go to the source of where, where this is coming from. Again, you can't be everybody's sweetheart in Costa mm -hmm. Austria. You don't run a personality contest in Costa Austria. You're in the wrong business. Yeah. This is serious business. Do you want to be liked by most? Absolutely. Do you want to treat everybody nice? Absolutely, because maybe you won't get hurt. Maybe you won't get a, a majority of people being discontented. So I don't see Frankie ever uh, going down that road. Is there jealousy of Frank? You bet your ass. I bet you there was. Yeah, that's how. I, yeah. Good guy. They used to call him Jackie's guy or the kid and say, this is not no. Like Frankie the Chico was called a kid when he was 70. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jackie yeah. knows made him a captain. The 30 year old snot knows made him a captain. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read some of the stuff on it. Uh, does he realize where the, a lot of bosses were bosses before they were 30? Yeah. Joe Banana was 26, I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. All right. So, <laughs> where, where are you guys at here? You're, you're, so, you're sitting here eating. Now it looks like we're eating. Yeah. yeah let's see. Yeah, it looks like an oblong table. Yeah, pretty good. Um, let's see. I think Junior, where's Junior here? I think he's all the way far right and on far left. Right? He's at one side ahead of the table over the other. Yes, I think, yep, he is. He's all the way over in the, yep. Far, the right side of the screen, yeah, I believe right. it'll be. Pete the Greek says the confidential informant, he never heard of him. Do you know why he flipped and what did he tell the government? He got caught dealing junk, uh, heroin. Yep. With uh, Nicky LaSauce, who was a wise guy. Okay. Let's see here. We'll fast I can forward. Put a, couple of, a cup of espresso if there's any around here, but. I don't know. Um, they, this was Cedar's Steakhouse. That's what Nick Taroni wrote. Yeah, right here. Yeah, no, I don't remember. Why hey, was you, you weren't there with me? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I went to the old homestead. Speaking of steakhouses, terrible. Yeah, I don't like the homestead either. Horrible. I wish I would have told you where I went. Well, Richard Gerard uh, added something. Uh, Jojo definitely had an issue with Cali being boss. Wow. Richie would know a little bit. He's from that Queens area and maybe heard some things. Could be. We'll talk, Rich. Hmm. That came. I'm running off the table first. <laughs> it is John Reed. There's Junior there. I see it. Yeah, that yeah. was on the other. Yep. Yep. No. That check got picked up anyway. It was comp. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, by the. Yeah. Louis Braj's uh, son-in-law. 
Now, now, Michael, you're thinking at this point, 94, like, th does everybody know? Oh, that's, no. that's Craig De Palma. Craig wound up uh, committing suicide. He hung himself in Atlanta and uh, died later on sometime later. How was his father treated after he flipped? Well, he it wasn't really flipped. It, how was he treated? He got everybody arrested again. Everybody gr gravitated around Greg. Yeah, I told the agent when I when I heard he, he got arrested again, I said, just let him out. It was just get he's the best agent you ever had. What are you arresting this guy for? Because Greg was always sick. Uh he was a funny bastard, I tell you. An incorrigible guy at times, but a funny bastard at, at others. Michael, at this time, you know, <clears throat> it's 94. Big trial just happened. John's off the street. Sammy cooperated. Gambino's all over the news. When you guys are out like this, do people recognize Junior? Does everyone know who you guys are at this point? I mean, it's a pack of you guys. Everyone, it's a packed casino. Is it hard for Junior, for Junior to walk around and do stuff like this without being recognized? Does everyone know who he is? Uh, not definitely not like his father. You know, don't forget, look at the way we're dressed. Even though you got a pack of guys, we could be uh, just a bunch of guys going to see the fight where we're walking into right now. We could just be a group of guys out going to see a fight. Uh, Junior, you know, yeah, he could be viewed. Oh, my God. It's a miracle. My cat just brought me. Where are you going, kitty cat? <laughs> Look at I fell. <laughs> that for you. Come on. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. Um, my cat, um, she's not going to like the coffee. She's going to come up and try to lick it. So we're getting down to the end of, of the of the of the tape here. But anyone that wants to, uh, Santiago is in the back room. I think John Travellino was back there. But if someone wants to come in and ask Michael a question, come on in. I answered so far. I've answered every question. I've asked every question. And, uh, hey, Michael, who was uh, Big Sky Montana? Who was fighting in the ring that night? It was uh, Pazienza against a really tough Irish kid. I tell you the truth, I was really rooting for the Irish kid because he. He was outmatched by Pazian. Pazian was a professional boxer. Uh, the kid looked like he, he didn't have too many fights on him, but he fought like hell. And uh, he did uh, He did a pretty good job. He lost, of course, Paz won. Um, and um, it was good. It was good to see. I'm not a fight guy. I like the fights, but I, I don't go crazy. Junior, Senior, Jackie, they, they really like the fights. Tori Lacasio loved the fights. There were certain guys, old school guys, that love uh, boxing. I uh, mean, I couldn't care less. Um, That's uh, me in the front, Fabiano, Jackie, Fusaro, talking to Junior, trying to talk to Junior. Um, was Greg De Palma shelved after he, after the attempted suicide? No. A uh, Greg De Palma. Oh, that's another story. Pete, I'm going to have to save that because that's a that's a uh, really, really important story. And I, it's long-winded. I have to get into a lot of detail about what happened there because it has to do with the Gold, Gold Club trial and uh, Craig going into the grand jury. So uh, it's a long, long story, and I'd rather just put it in proper context, if you don't mind. Now, what I'm noticing here is, see the date here? This is this, this way before. It's the day before. And that's why we seen a, a, a flip flop. Yeah. Yep. Something happening. I, they gave me a bootleg tape. <laughs> Damn government. I was trying to screw with me. <laughs> um, this Atlanta case. To the dinner footage, as far as food, was there ever someone you love? Was there ever somewhere that you love to eat that everyone else or junior hated, like Chinese, Greek, or barbecue? I'm going to flip that around. Junior loved Chinese food. I didn't hate it. I thought that I, I, strong word hate. I don't I like, didn't like Chinese food. It wasn't Greek yeah. food. I love great Greek food. Yeah. Barbecue, I could with all that stuff they slop all over. Not for me, but Greek anything Mediterranean, I loved. Uh, yeah, Greek. They make the best the best lamb there is. Greeks and some Arabs too make some great lamb. Turkish. But uh, yeah. answer your question. Yeah, I, I had to choke down Chinese food. 
isn't it conspicuous to be out with so many people where where isn't this a secret society? Oh well, where is the secret society? Okay. Yeah, that went away a long time ago. <laughs> that thing went away. Hey, listen, I would go to a club and girls, bar maids, girls just hanging around would say, Hey, you're gonna go to Joey's uh a party? What kind of party? What do you mean party? What what do you who Joey? They would tell me and I would say, Why what was you having a party for? Didn't you hear he just got made? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not too much of a secret. And that was only one time, was many times that I heard even from women bar maids that got guys were getting straightened out or got straightened out. Having parties and stuff, celebra yeah, celebrating they parties for themselves. <laughs> I'm an out party. Now, if that got back to the Party. This was like mob coming out party. Now, if that got back to a boss, would that it be did. like it did? Okay. And what's it the does. boss? What's the boss say to that? I don't. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the boss probably says, "I." I, I I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot. Go ahead. The boss. The, the boss probably says, "Ah, I, I threw one too when I got made." <laughs> where's my Where's my invitation? <laughs> No, but you know when it was real secret like that, right? When it, it, these were special events, they really were, and there was a party set up. There was party food and you know drinks. Uh, it was more an event when you got made for some people. When I know guys that became captains, that that huge banquet for them, being a captain. Yeah. When I got me the captain, Junior says, "You're a captain." I said, "Hey, thank you, thank you." Yeah, that was it. But uh, there was always, it was more traditional, more ceremony to it, which which is really nice, you know, uh, being a captain and, and one of the families at that time was, uh, it was really special. Now, you know, being a captain is pretty much watered down. I want to bring on uh, Santiago and then. Oh, wait, before you, you were supposed to ask me, a, you were supposed to ask me a question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You forgot yeah. already? About a letter, right? Yeah. There you go. I had it written down. I almost forgot. Tell me about the letter. <laughs> okay. So uh, sometime after this visit to uh, Foxwoods Casino, John Jr. gets a letter from the casino, right? Saying, if you come on our property again, we're going to arrest you anywhere in our reservation. I think it was like 1,400 acres or something like 1,500 acres. You'll be, you'll be arrested for trespassing. Don't come back no more. So Jr. loves the Indians. Chief Joseph, I believe, is his favorite person he studied as an Indian for, for Indians. And um, now we get him a lot of Indian stuff. Uh, boy, I got him a ring made of, of Chief Joseph as close as I could make it. So he's really into that. So he got the letter. Of course, what I got to do, I got to break his chops. And the Indians threw you out. The Indians threw you out, right? So a week goes by, I don't get a letter. Two weeks go by, I don't get a letter. It's more times going by, and I'm telling John, I, I get no letter. They threw you out, right? <laughs> I get a letter. And who's it signed by? The same exact letter. It was a boilerplate letter, right? Same thing. And who's it signed by? It's not signed by an Indian. It's signed by an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know what? For a while there, I was rooting for the Indians. I got nobody to root for anymore. <laughs> now, forget the Cowboys fight. The, the Indians were the underdog, right? Yeah. Uh, these poor people were oppressed by our, by our government forever. You know, their lands taken, there were genocide and everything else. So I was I rooted for the Indians. And that's another thing Junior and I had in common, you know, uh, yeah. the Indians, how they were abused in this country. Um, so I says, I, I got nobody to root for. I'm not rooting for them no more. But an Italian signed my letter. So I brought it out to Junior and, and I showed him. Take care. Peace and love. Michael, close it out. God bless, Patriot Asian family. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, hopefully we got some more stories coming up. Sounds good.